I'm usually not very good at talking to the camera, but maybe if I um, suck on this McCafe here, no sponsorship from McDonald's on this one, I'll be able to pull it off, but there's uh, absolutely no guarantees. Can't see a thing now. How stupid was that? You know the time when you're laying in bed, you're not really awake, you're not really asleep, but you're just somewhere in between. Well, there was this night in December, just before Christmas, and there was this almighty bang! Whoa, what was that? And I'm there laying in bed and I'm trying to work out what was that. The first thing I thought of, there'd been a lightning strike just outside, like the telegraph pole out the front of our house. The next thing, my son came to the room and he said, Dad, did you hear that? And I said, I certainly did. And I sort of tried to tell him, I think it's a lightning strike. He said to me, the power's off. He noticed the night lights in the house were off. And I thought to myself, okay, I looked up at the clock. The clock's not working. And I thought, wow. And I kept rethinking the event. I kept thinking it must have been a lightning strike and it hit the power pole because we've got no power. But then I thought, I remember hearing the bang and I think then we, we saw the flash and my son concurred. So lightning doesn't work like that. Let me show you an example when it's flipped around the other way. Yeah, so with lightning, you get the flash and then the bang. This event was flipped around the other way and then I started hearing my neighbor's voice. I thought, uh-oh, this sounds like trouble. And of course, you're trying to think, well, what's caused this? We headed outside and the sun was with me. It was around about 10 o'clock at night. I grabbed my mobile phone, as you always do wherever you go. I was in my pajamas, I think. And the first thing I noticed was our power lines were basically down at head height. And I thought, well, that's a bit weird. And I looked across to where our power pole used to be. Well, that's past tense because it was gone. Okay, <laughs> okay. And then, of course, the whole street's in blackout. Other neighbours were coming out. And we're all looking around. And we sort of thought, well, what's going on here? We couldn't see a vehicle anywhere. And then one of my neighbours suggested, oh, it must have been the local shop's truck at night has come through and has cleaned up the power pole. It's been a hit and run. The truck's, the Coles truck has just, you know, taken off, taking the power pole out. And we just thought, well, that sort of makes sense. We also noticed another vehicle in the middle of the road and it had all these wires wrapped around it as well. A lot of them were the telephone wires and we weren't even really thinking and we're out there I'm stumbling around the front of our place there's power lines down on the ground there's power lines like at head height there's also telecommunication lines wrapped around this car and the driver gets out and he goes oh you know I've, I've got to get out of here I said I think your vehicle's damaged you may want to hang around and no he just wanted his car cleared so he got the the, the wires wrapped around his roof racks in his car and he took off and then we heard more neighbors up the road come out and they said there's a car up here I thought, well, okay, so I could see up the road and there seemed to be a ute that was, well, sort of on the path and sort of just in the front of someone's house. Which, you know, you're trying to piece this together and I had, luckily I had my phone with me. It was so black I couldn't video, but I started to take some photographs. And I think I'm the only person who had photographs of this event. It was a very, very peculiar night. It was what became the beginning of a whole series of very, very strange events that happened in the neighborhood. This is just, you know, the event number one. And so there we were trying to piece it together, more and more neighbors coming out. Um, it's weird how events like this get people talking. It's sort of sad because sometimes it's the only time you talk to your neighbors. And I thought to myself, there's, there's going to be a dead person in the car. You know, I just thought with the damage that I saw done to the pole, and it was pulverized at the base, and the car has gone so far up the street, it's like about three or four houses up. I said, I can't see how that's a survivable accident. As so I went up to the car and... I was expecting to see the worst, and I thought, well, that's weird. There's no driver in there. And then I'm looking around, I'm thinking, well, where's the driver gone? And there was a young fellow there, and I, look, he would have been maybe 20, um, maybe, very young. Um, and he, well, seemed agitated, would be a word. He also seemed confused, and sure enough, that's the driver. And uh, another neighbor said he, they saw him trying to get back in the car after the accident to try and basically drive away. I think that's how out of it he was. Either he was punch drunk or something because I think when that airbag slaps your face, I don't, don't know whether it knocks that much common sense into you. I think it would be a very, very severe event. Anyway, uh, ambulance turned up, the police turned up. It was very strange because nothing turned up under siren. This whole event, uh, very few people in the suburb uh, knew that it went on and it was all black, okay? Um, we're, there we were piecing it together. I think some electricity people came along or something and all of a sudden, oh, you know, watch out, the power lines are down. <laughs> it's strange because 
we could see the power lines were down, but we sort of forgot that they, they could still have power in them, and there was still one phase working. I think there's three phases that work in the power lines in the street. But then again, I was being careful stumbling around in the dark, but, you know, once power's down on the ground, who knows what else it's getting into. Just a very, very, very strange night. And thinking back to when I was laying in bed and we were trying to process what goes on, I think what happened is the cars hit the pole, the power lines have been swinging around, they flashed after the big bang of the car hitting the pole, and that's why it all seemed reversed around and sort of nothing like a lightning strike. Although, the sound of the flash, you think immediately you think lightning strike. It's funny how your mind plays games with you. I, in my mind, I kept thinking, how has this person survived this? And you, you, you know, you're starting to try and piece together in your mind, well, what's happened here? How can someone on a straight piece of road just veer off and hit this power pole and there was no brake marks. One of the front wheels had cocked sideways and I noticed the next day when I was taking video out the house, you could see a, basically a skid mark, but that was the front wheel which had cocked around basically on the impact side. Uh, this person has seemingly hit the power pole and just kept on going. It was just one of those strange nights. Uh, what made it even stranger was there was a car that had come around the corner just up the road and the car had stopped and the people got out of the car and they took off. It was a black car in a blacked out street and they left the car on the road. I think we've got pictures of that somewhere. And another neighbor and myself, we got into the car, we put the hazard lights on so the car could be seen. And we noticed there was some new Apple stuff on the, I think the passenger side seat. And we just thought it was very strange. Someone would depart a car like this, just leave it there, unlocked. There were, I don't think there were, I'm not sure if there were keys in it or not. But ended up, we told the police, we said, look, just around the corner, there's this abandoned car in the middle of the road, and it's another thing you may have to want to chase up. I don't know what happened there. It was just very strange. It sort of stacked onto the strange things that were happening that night. So, sort of, you know, I don't know, by about 11.30 or nearly midnight, we all sort of went back into our homes. By then, you know, the, the tow trucks turned up, dragged the car away. It all got cleaned up very fast. It was all quite peculiar in that sense, but then that's the way things happen, that people's jobs are tidying up after these events. And there was a pole crew there that turned up, the people had come and fix up power poles, and I thought to myself, oh, it'll take, you know, hours and hours to get this fixed, but in a miraculous event, and I woke up the next morning, I came out, I thought, my crikeys. <laughs> I'm looking up, and there's a power pole, a brand new spanking power pole there, although the light, we used to have a light uh, off the power pole there the light wasn't there but all the power lines were back up and the power people came and had a chat to me and they said oh would well, your power will be on very shortly i was just thinking wow and i got chatting to these people now from osgrid these guys were amazing okay and i really i said look i'm really thankful for your work and they said oh we do this all the time uh they wanted to see my photographs of the accident when they had a they're very interested to see how or what had happened because the funny thing is by the time they turned up a lot of the evidence of what happened had gone, and certainly by the morning, once the power pole was put back in, anybody walking past our place or driving past, well, all they saw was like people attending to a power pole. Nobody had really known about this car accident. Maybe some people realised they had no power for part of the night. But um, just very interesting speaking to the Osgrid people. Very, very good work. They did very quietly, like little mice. They put this power pole in uh, very efficiently as well. And, of course, they had many stories about cars and the poles they do this all the time and they got talking about i said to them i don't know how the car had so little damage and the person survived and they said well it was an old pole and apparently old poles will pulverize basically explode and pulverize and i remember there's a very strong smell of uh, almost like cut timber when i came out when i first came out because it was like all the timber in the power pole was all mangled and and warmed up and it smelled like you know a chain someone had been chainsawing timber very very peculiar thing and they said to me, what can change this is if it's a new power pole, basically cars go in it, the power pole will stay solid and the car gets basically either cut in half or the car will wrap around the power pole. Or if an old power pole has got a spike, I hopefully got some video of a spike or some pictures, the spikes are put in there to basically save maybe an older power pole to stabilize it. If there's a spike there and a the car hits one of those spikes, it basically cuts it uh, like a hot knife through butter. Uh, people tend to have lots of trouble if they hit one of those spikes and they when they run off the road so we've got their power back and everything and i thought to myself well that's one problem solved and the osgrid people said to me look i'll give you a warning uh your internet's down and all the rest of it he said look it'll be weeks before that's resolved and uh he said maybe months i said you're joking aren't you 
And she said, no, no, this, I'm just giving you a warning there. This is NBN Co. we're dealing with here. And I thought, okay. And I thought to myself, oh, I'm okay. I got this. I can hotspot through this and all the rest of it. Well, how naive was I in thinking that? So the pole's been replaced. The mystery of exactly what happened that night, lots of it remains a mystery. Uh, my direct next door neighbor needs uh, a communication um, because of medical reasons. They didn't have a mobile phone, but they're with Telstra. They got a, a phone sent to them within 24 hours so they could get communications back. Uh, I wasn't so lucky. Uh, my internet service provider, and I'll try and condense this story, is, uh, is someone I've been with since 1996. So that's a very, very long period of time. I explained to them my situation. I said, look, uh, there's, pretty there's a pretty good chance I'm going to be without internet uh, as an MBN for some period of time. I explained to them what had happened. I also raised the, the fact that we've lost MBN. And <laughs> of course, I said, have you checked your modem, sir? I said, this is a bit more than the modem. This is... <laughs> This is the whole line from the house is basically on the ground, okay? And I had to explain this in well, quite, quite detailed. It's funny, I wish I could just send them a picture. A picture tells a thousand words. And I could see that my data on my phone was nearly up. Um, I'm not normally hotspotting or using too much data through my phone. And of course, I'm a YouTuber, so I need lots of data because I'm always putting rubbish up online. And uh, I thought to myself, well, this is interesting. It was the beginning of the holidays. It was just prior to Christmas. Now the kids were screaming that there's there's no internet. My son, well, look, one one blessing in disguise in all this was okay. No Fortnite, no mucking around on the internet, no Netflix, no watching silly videos on YouTube, and the the thing that happened at home was the toys came out. It was just amazing. All of a sudden, the toys were out, and they've been they've all been collecting dust because well, you don't play with toys. You're on. You know, playing Fortnite or Roblox or Minecraft. It's funny, Minecraft is making a comeback in the sense my daughter's back playing Minecraft. Okay, so, and also my son's getting into it because of the educational aspect of it through school. That's been very interesting to see. But I said to them, I said, look, we could have no internet for weeks to come. <laughs> I, I was scary, I said the whole holidays. Okay, well, it could have been the whole holidays. And of course, they freaked out, and I thought, I'll have to find a solution. I, did upload one video onto YouTube and I, I knew it was going to cost a lot of money but I wanted to do to do it to see what would happen and through the hotspot feature on your phone because the 4G connection is actually a pretty good connection it's good upload good download speed if you're a YouTuber you need a good upload speed most houses don't have a good upload speed uh, my normal NBN connection through the cable that comes to the house we've got fiber to the node we don't have fiber to the house or fiber to the curb I've got 40 megabytes per second up and 100 down but really it's more like 60 down if you're lucky and if in reality more like 40 down okay it tends to be pretty close to 40 up and most people don't need 40 up so I, you know it's really made my life easier to upload videos onto youtube i did one video up through my hotspot here and it's a good connection through that and it cost i think it ended up it worked out it was like 60 dollars to upload one video and i thought this is ridiculous okay they like charging me Oh, what was it, like $10 a gigabyte, okay? When in reality, a good deal is like a dollar a gigabyte. I hope I'm right there in saying those figures. Uh, it's, I mean, it's funny. It started to make me realize that data is gold. I was quite naive to that because I took my unlimited um, thing that I've got through my service provider. You take it for granted because you can just do anything and you're not getting slapped around. Uh, and of course, I'm using a lot of data because of what I do. And I thought to myself, well, I've got to explain to my telco that I need this connection. I could be out of it for a while. Can we do a negotiation? Can I please um, do a deal where I can just for the time I haven't got my NBN connected, can I get a better deal on using the hotspot through my phone so I'm not getting slugged around? And I, look, I won't go into the full details of this, but I could never negotiate them to come and help me on this. I kept saying, I've been with you since 1996. I didn't want to hear. So, I mean, one part, you can get angry about this. I was getting, you know, you get the, you, you ring up these telcos, you're getting bounced around between departments. I think nearly every time I was speaking to someone in the Philippines, but I got, we just got sidetracked. We talked about typhoons in the end. <laughs> we just talked about storms. Little did I know what was coming to our place the next day. Anyway, but, um, Look, they look. They're always polite and they're nice, but I couldn't wrangle a deal where I could get a, a reasonable rate. And then someone that I know in the suburb 
and I didn't sort of look I didn't really know this person I knew this, this person's wife a little bit more there's someone I knew th through the school and they said hey Leo there's a solution there's these little boxes you can get mini modems and they come in boxes like this and this can solve your problem because this is like a little uh, 4g card uh, like a little telephone card and it's basically a little modem and it's going to help you out and it's going to get you back up on the internet without ripping you off I thought that's okay and I investigated a bit further and the person who told me about this let's just say he works for a he's a grey hat very interesting person uh, I don't know if you know what a grey hat is a grey hat is an ethical hacker so they work for companies often they're uh, resolving tech issues with people trying to take out their websites or stolen content online or whatever and what scared me about him was he fired at me about 10 questions and within me answering those 10 questions he got within a smidgen of understanding my my password onto YouTube and Google accounts I said wow how did you pull that off he guess he just knew how to what questions to ask so that's what these people are like and maybe some people in my audience know those little tricks as well I was actually very impressed by that I was very scared okay so you start to respect these people because I think he could have easily worked out my password to get onto my YouTube account very easily uh, once he's fired these questions at me and it made me thinking wow I was off guard and I, and I sort of let my guard down and then he, he, he jumped on that uh, he was a person that told me about this and the device looks like this and this isn't an ad for this and I'm not a Telstra customer I, I, I just use this as a convenience to get through a difficult time and you know uh, look it's still not free data you're still paying for it but you're not getting slugged at ridiculous rates okay so and if you shop around with <laughs> it becomes a minefield of information you, you can get good deals on those on the data to keep you know supplying those things uh, a nice little device got me out of trouble and it was like weeks and weeks I'm trying to think it might have been three and a half four weeks and then the NBN people started to turn up and once again I was talking to those people and <laughs> this was the bizarre aspect to this was that they there was about six houses that were had their telecommunication cables affected because it was all copper wire connections to be it you know your modems in, in your house because we're all sort of NBN bound now in the neighborhood uh, yet MBN Co couldn't see that this one telegraph pole had you know all these connections affected by it and each person you can't or well, each person we can't speak to MBN directly because they're a wholesaler so if I hear someone on the street saying I just called up MBN Co and, uh, Co and gave them a serve well that actually could never happen because you can't contact them you always got to go through your internet service provider ISP so uh, what was sad was that an extra neighbor was the first to be connected but then when the people came to connect up they said oh you've got a, like a shared line from the pole that goes to two houses they said while I'm here I could almost do your neighbor as well but I'm I wasn't on that day's job list I was like the next week <laughs> okay so uh, it, it became very interesting the people who did my connection it was those people it was a stinking hot day like classic middle of the summer day and I think my wife we we're doing for them some fruit uh, some nice cool fruit to have and once again whenever you engage with these technical people that come and fix up things in your suburb don't har a lot of people were harassing these people um, because we'd had storms weeks earlier a lot of people in the suburb had lost internet connection but this wasn't the big big storm this is like one of the first of the summer storms and it was amazing how rude people were speaking to these uh, technical people who were in the suburb I was astonished at the way people spoke to them I was apologizing okay so I said look I said I don't know how you put up with this and I think they just put up with this all the time uh, very interesting to be on their side and then if you're nice to them they do nice things back to you and that's always I think that's always the case when you're dealing with people although my internet service provider who I've been with since 1996 uh, I, I'd, I'd like to say I've had enough of them but then again this is one moment in time and I've been with them for so long and and I've had no problems up until this point but then again how many times do you get a connection pulled directly from your house and you got no cable it's a fairly rare event okay and what happened was and little did I know uh, this was the beginning of what was to be a layering of events that happened in the suburb and which became disasters the next day was the big hailstorm and the big downpour we <laughs> we had actually a, a couple of major downpours which really really caused damage but uh, in a funny way the poor boy who hit the pole was an, a very insignificant thing versus what was to come the next day 
which was officially the first day of the holidays with the, with the children at home. And uh, wow, that was the 20th of December when that storm hit. Uh, the 19th of December when the pole was taken out. And it's the sort of things that I'll remember for a very, very long bit of time. And that video will be like, you know, part two of uh, disasters of the suburb and things that just kept going wrong in the suburb of the summer of 2018 slash 2019. But I think that, you know, one great thing that I learned about was this little mini modem thing. Maybe you probably think, oh, Leo, you surely knew about those. And the thank you back to the person who told me about that was, well, he was the person who had the Subaru, which had the hail damage, and the insurance company was saying that was fraudulent dents on that car. Well, I said to him, look, I can, you know, you fix me up in a problem and I can fix you up in return. I'll do a nice little video for you. It's gonna make that insurance company look quite sheepish and foolish. And uh, in the end, uh, thankfully, and I can tell you this now, that person uh, got a full payout. But I tell you what, that insurance company was playing games. And man, oh man, uh, we're now as I'm speaking to camera here, we're about four months past that storm, and I could tell you many, many little insurance stories that have gone on in the suburb and people have connected to me and <laughs> I would love to bring these stories to line, but I'm still waiting for my house to be uh, resolved and fixed. Uh, once that's done, once that's done, <laughs> watch out, I've got a few good stories for you. Very interesting stories and advice of what to do when things start to go wrong and how to cover yourself, uh, especially when it comes to damage around the house or damage to your cars and the games that insurance companies play. Woohoo! Man, uh, did I learn a lot in the last couple of months. But um, yeah, that's my story about the boy into the pole. It was the shape of things to come, I tell you. We had a lot of bad stuff happen from that point on. Woo! Mm, that's better. Much better when you turn the lights out.